We the brown boys. The brown boys. The brown boys. We the brown boys. The brown boys. We the brown boys. Okay. That song, that song became a classic on the internet because he edited up some of the things that you said about Kamala Harris that now people are bringing back up about uh, Mr. Brown that she allegedly uh, was with the senator. What's his name? Something Brown. Oh, you talking about uh, <laughs> the mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown? Yeah, she got her start from Willie Brown, and a lot of people have been speaking about some of the things that you brought to the internet that infamous day. Yeah, well, you know, it's like this. Oh, we got to go support the sister. We can get a black woman in the white. No, you're not getting one. Her daddy says his entire background is either Caucasian Irish or Caucasian Hindu. His Irish ancestors owned a bunch of slaves and none of his ancestors were slaves. He has a grandmother who is a dark skinned Hindu who was a house servant. So where does Kamala get her black ancestry since her mother is classified as a Caucasian Tamil Hindu Brahmin caste person? They're dark skinned, but they're known anthropologically is Indo-Aryans, I-N-D-O hyphen, same word that the Nazis used to talk about the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan supermen from this far north. It was a lie told very long, very loudly, and a lot of people believed it. They still do. Aryan nation, Aryan brotherhood, the neo-Nazis. But Aryans look exactly like Kamala Harris. They're swarthy, dark haired, dark eyed, and they're classified as Caucasian. So she's got a Caucasian mother, Caucasian dad. Where the hell does she come in being black? And even if her great grandmother was part black, that's still not enough to make her black in America. She'd still be a typical white person. You want to see what the deal is? If you're white and black, do they call you white? No. They call you black or that other N word. If you are Chinese and black, they don't call you Chinese. They call you black. But she's supposed to be Hindu and black. And what do they call her in her own community? Hindu. So, yeah, she's lying. She went all through California being district attorney of uh, San Francisco that Willie Brown Hindu. Then she became attorney general for California, the first Hindu Asian DA. And then she became senator from California after so Wait, they said she was a, that, wait, wait, in California, they said she was Hindu what? Asian. That's classified as Asian, Hindu. That's from India. So she was an wow. in, uh, Asian Hindu all through California. And now she's black. She went to Howard. Yes, she's an AKA, yes, but that doesn't make her black. She grew up in Canada. Her yearbook that you can find online if you want to go spend the time looking it up in which she published when she had some things going on in California, it says she went from kindergarten through 12th grade in Canada. She lied about being bused in elementary school because she never went to elementary school in San Francisco. She was born in the same hospital in the same 12 month period my ex-wife was and my ex now late mother-in-law was a paternity nurse in the same delivery room where she was born. So yeah, she comes from that, but her mother was a Hindu, a visiting scholar, and her daddy was a visiting Hindu scholar, also professor. So how does she become from that background? She becomes a black woman. She's not. She's a fake. She's been faking her whole damn life. So is she this is this symbolism towards black women? Because they got a bunch of AKAs no, and we're getting a black they woman. Wanna they want to recruit mammies. Okay. So the whole deal in slavery, the Democratic Party invented, you know, this methodology because they were this party of slavery. They got chartered 
first, second decade of the 19th century to spread and protect slavery. And they started the Civil War. They started the Klan, Jim Crow, segregation, separate but equal, supposedly, which didn't turn out that way. All of the racism, all of the racist sheriffs and structure that you had in the South that was democratic. And now they turn the same methodology that they used to tame, train, and domesticate and work Negro cattle on their plantations. They've done it so they get the same thing. It's what you do is you never ever let black men lead other black men if you can help it. Always get a black woman to do it. That was a secret that, that the slave masters had. So they recruit comely winches to be bed winches. And if they're good, they move up to the top floor. And when they get gray hair, they make them mammies and put them out to run the color on the plantation. That's what they're doing. So they fake this. Now, when I had my show in this, when it first started 26 years ago, there were what I thought were two beautiful sisters on staff. One of them was quite dark. And one day when the group of us were having a, a staff happy hour, one of them said, Judge, you think we're black women, don't you? I said, aren't you? She said, no, we're Hindu. And they gave me a couple of books written by some of their fellows, two guys who had cut their hair off so you couldn't see how wavy it was, changed the way they dressed, changed their language patterns and passed for being black and gotten, in one case, a scholarship to medical school or got his way paid and the other one got paid through school masquerading black Americans. They're not. They're Hindu. They're swarthy. They're dark skinned. And you have to understand that because just because you have color to you does not mean you are black or African American or Afro American or Eidos or whatever. And this woman has absolutely no connection to the black man in America. Now, she's AKA, but so was my mother. My mother for the AKAs out there got made 1934. She, she's an ivy behind the wall. So I can talk. I don't have anything against them. Loved mama, you know, like dad. He was proud of him. But anyway, she is going through this stuff claiming that because she's an AKA, this makes her a black woman and she's the first black Greek to be uh, vice president of the United States and likely candidate for president of the United States. No, that's a lie. The Alphas, A-5-A, they had Hubert Humphrey, big six foot, four inch tall, blonde haired, blue eyed, white boy, balding, who got made with a lot of wood back in the late 30s as an undergrad and then again as a grad student in the late 40s and he was vice president of the United States under Lyndon James Johnson and Democratic Party candidate for president Tricky Dick I not a crook Millhouse Nixon so you get this it's a lie and they're trying to do something with black women that I recognize from having in we studied propaganda a long time ago, UCLA and this. I people low self esteem and an acute. Well, hold on, hold on, Judge. You got to check, check your audio. They're doing something with your audio. Your audio is getting distorted. There's a little bit of delay in your. Yeah, they your always face. do this one. Yeah, I think. I don't know what's going they on. They always but. do this. I can tell you, they always do this. Where am I on if I start talking about the cum queen? All right. <laughs> now, this heifer gets out there and say, baby, if you're nice, I'm going to do page 27 in the middle out of the Kama Sutra with you. And then we'll go to 53 at the top and follow up with page 112 at the bottom. And... I don't have any problem with anybody sleeping around. Get your get your freak on. That's your business. 
But when you have sex for business or profit, money, profit, you a hoe. I represented them to know what they are like. And she stepped her way to the top. The LA Times detailed it often enough. She was with Willie Brown, and when she's in her 20s as a law student, what does she do? She gets hired through Willie Brown to work for this medical firm contracts with the city of San Francisco. This is 30 some years ago, so the amount of money would be greatly increased in today's dollars, but she was getting $72,000 a year for working a 15 hour part-time job that the newspaper said was a fraud because she never showed up. She'd spend the time Dang. with Mayor Brown. Now, he got her a promotion to 20 hours a week and she wouldn't show up, but she was getting paid $120,000 a year for that. And he bought her a 750 BMW. Now, he made the connections to get her into politics. Now, the LA Times and the San Francisco Chronicle and some other stuff, they carried these articles back when about how she wanted to get on with this big firm. They wouldn't get her, so she started sleeping with one of their clients, an NBA player. Then she wanted to get on with the DA's office, so she had an affair with the assistant director. Then she got in through Montel Williams to get into the holiday Hollywood scene. She still hanging with the Brown. She came here to meet a friend of mine who was a lady judge, uh, got told off by Kamala Harris because uh, the lady judge went up to speak to Mayor Brown and Kamala apparently, according to the report, jumped in, that's my man, get away from him. And the judge said, he ain't my type. But anyway, you know, this has been going on. So she's sort of done the casting couch to get up. Now I know from Hollywood, there are a lot of women and these guys that did the casting couch since it tends to be girl on girl, boy on boy now. And the thing of it is, is if you have talent and hold off on that, you'll get there with whatever you do you can make your own breaks but if you try to do the casting couch you get typecast and everybody knows you're a piece of ass so that's why you get treated and also there's another thing you <laughs> tend to rise quickly but your limits hit you now looking at kamala you see her sure say stuff like today is going to be tomorrow so tomorrow is today so that's why we have today like, what the hell did you just say? Well, I've talked to some doctors and they tell me that's a sign of early onset dementia. Now, she's 60 years old. And at my age, I know there are people that are 90, 100 that are sharp. And I've also witnessed some people that I've known for years who late 50s, early 60s started going senile. They started suffering from dementia some of them had Alzheimer's that developed. And, and that circular word salad thing she's doing uh, illustrates early onset dementia, which considering her age would indicate a worse situation than decrepit Biden, buzzard bait, who's ready to die and baits the buzzards to come down and feed on the carcass. So she doesn't really have what it takes because she has no experience administering things. She's been a casting couch figurehead. She didn't run the DA's office in San Francisco, though she interjected herself often. She didn't run the attorney general's office for California. She just did political intervention. And then she got sponsored to be Senator. Now, how she got there in California is she's not a parent. She has no children, though she adopted her Jewish husband's children. And that's after they were essentially in high school. But she locked up more than a thousand parents because they supposedly had delinquent children. And a lot of these parents basically single female parents, mothers, black mothers, 
drop the kids off, say, on the steps of the school, and the kid played hooky. They didn't know, but they got locked up. Uh, she gave out the stiffest sentences in the United States for simple possession of marijuana in San Francisco, of all places, but to black males, not to the white ones. She had pogroms against black males. The California Supreme Court on one occasion had to order her to surrender exculpating, exculpating evidence on somebody convicted of a murder. She habitually intervened to keep black men from being put on parole so they could be used as firefighters to fight these California wildfires they had, forest fires. She's got a whole list of horrors that she has uh, committed in the interest of her ambitions, whatever they were. And black men have suffered now she's used black men and she exemplifies the attitude that i saw in the prostitutes and dancers many of each that i've represented over the years and that's that they disdain men and it seems her mother was a staunch feminist and that's who raised her because mom and dad couldn't get along with each other and they quickly broke up so she had a sister who, by the way, is an aunt by marriage with Jesse Smollett. You remember the noose around the neck and the fake lynching attempt up in Chicago to get uh, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris through the door on bringing back up uh, something that John Conyers introduced in 1997 as the anti-lynch bill now known as the Emmett Till anti-lynch bill that has absolutely nothing to do with lynching, but everything with interjecting uh, sexual orientation into American criminal, federal criminal law. Now, away from that, back to her. Uh, we have one West Bank that was owned by the billionaire George Soros. It was CEO'd by Mnuchin, who infamously was with the Obama administration. Well, they defrauded a lot of people with this mortgage bundling scheme. And throughout California, various counties returned a total of more than 5,200 counts of indictments against One West Bank and uh, Mnuchin for felonious conduct. So Mnuchin and Soros sponsored, raised a lot of money and got it through some channels to get Kamala Harris elected as attorney general for California. She used the authority of that office to consolidate all of these indictments and get them dismissed. And then a few weeks later, Soros sold one West Bank for $4.2 billion. And a lot of people were out of their houses, homes, investments, and were destitute as a result. So that evil has not been corrected. Now, when she was in office in San Francisco, she had every opportunity to take some steps using the authority of the district attorney's office to come up with rehabilitative programs to get training in vocational education for all of these people that were living in Oakland and Richmond in her district. She did nothing except try to put his people in jail. Nothing about assisting to deal with parents skills and circumstances of black women in Richmond and Oakland who were having problems with their male children she just chose to put them in jail. And she's got a history of opportunistically exploiting the moment. Now, on the world scene, this woman who has no experience with diplomacy except what we've seen as an abject failure when they gave her the go to be the chief diplomat on the ground in Europe for the United States, she just embarrassed the hell out of the country with her word salad nonsense 
we found she had not grown out of her California habit of being extremely lazy. And we had this mass turnover in her staff who indicated that they were just disgusted at staying up late at night and doing all this work to give her briefings and she wouldn't pay any attention. And from the lawyers that I know in California who actually dealt with her in a courtroom, they said instead of preparation, she just hiked up her hemline when she wanted to make an impression. So that's the kind of thing we have, but we're left with someone that has also failed when they got given a real task. Remember, she's the border czar. So do we have any control over the border? No. We've got all of these folks just crashing across who are going to usurp the positions of black people in the economy. She's already talking about taking these tens of millions who've crashed the border and fast tracking them so they can vote and get all of the citizenship rights and bypassing or cutting the line on these people who've actually tried to do it the right way. We have a situation where California and the thing that she's supporting through Newsom, they're trying to end homeless shelters out there for ordinary Americans who are down and out and use the facilities to put in the illegals. You've got massive outbreaks of hepatitis, HIV, uh, you've got a problem with measles epidemics and a horrendous tuberculosis strain that has no known cure that is spreading. You've got people from gangs, empty penitentiaries in South America. You've got people who are sexual offenders, predators, homicidal maniacs. You've got drug dealers. You've got all sorts of criminality that she did absolutely nothing to vet coming across the border. You've got this thing going on in Ukraine and also in Gaza, and you've got enemies of the country. You've got all of these military age Chinese males who are coming across sleeping in uniform uh, backpack tents with collective community stoves that they can pack. And I'm sure these people who have a thing against the United States have brought over military grade explosives that nobody checked them for, gotten government transportation to the cities and critical locations they needed to get to. And they planted those explosives and on cue, if necessary, they'll detonate them and make 911 look like a Boy Scout meeting. 